Photoshop has profoundly changed my life. I've used it to create financial stability, a career, and more importantly, an unbreakable sense of confidence in myself. Hey there, I'm Chris Barron. I'm a best-selling author, a certified Photoshop instructor, and one of the world's top Photoshop instructors with over 200,000 students on Udemy, one of the best e-learning platforms. But I didn't start out like this. I'm from Romania, where my life was pretty tough growing up. In fact, I used to sell cosmetics door-to-door, -door, on foot, in the blazing summer heat. By teaching myself Photoshop, I was able to build an exciting new career, which is why I want to share my experience with you, so you can gain a valuable life skill and achieve your own goals. When I was getting started, sometimes I had trouble following the instructor, because their screen looked different than mine. It was frustrating and it made me want to give up. So, before we continue, let's set up Photoshop together, so we're both looking at the same thing. Let's open up Photoshop. This is your starting point, and you can use the bottom part to open a previous project. You can change the viewing mode by using these two icons, though I strongly suggest you stick with the thumbnail layout. The top part constantly changes, but you probably won't use it that often. What is important is this section right here. The open button allows you to browse for files on your computer, be it images or saved projects. If you're wondering about the file types you can open, just click here. The list, as you can see, is huge. But let's get to our bread and butter, the new project window. Either click on this button, or as I tend to do it, hit Ctrl N. That's Command N on a Mac. Photoshop wants you to get up and running with the project as fast as possible. What you need to know is that just about every single option here can be customized later down the road. So you can approach these settings totally relaxed. At the top of this window, you'll find a few categories to help you out. As you move through them, you'll find various presets. Notice this part here changes constantly, specifically the width and the height, but in some cases, even the resolution. In short, for printed materials, the standard is 300 pixels per inch. For projects that will remain on screens, be it monitors or the mobile devices, 72 pixels per inch is best used. I specialize in graphic design, web design, and app design. Most of my work won't need printing. As such, I like to use the web category. From here, I customize my width and my height values. Say 1000 by 500 pixels. Just type that in. And I prefer to uncheck the artboards feature, just to keep things nice and simple. Hit create and we're good to go. We've just started our first project. Let's explore the interface and set everything up. The first step is to match our screens. Go to the top right side of the program and click on this icon that's on the right side of the magnifying glass. From this drop down, you have a bunch of options, but we're looking for the essentials. Just in case this is not a completely fresh installation of Photoshop, click again, but this time choose Reset Essentials. That's how we make sure we're on the same page. Right, these are called panels, and we have a lot of them each one with their own purpose. This is the Layers panel here. This is the Learn panel here. And so on. But the thing is, we don't need all of them. Let's simplify the interface. To remove any of them, go over their name, click, hold, and drag it away. I suggest you move it somewhere around this white part. After that's done, you'll see a close symbol in the top right corner. It's very tiny, but use it and that's that. Repeat the process until you're left with two panels, properties and layers. If you need help, please see the workbook for this lesson for more details. Right, don't think we deleted any panels. If you want to enable any of them, go to the top menu to Window. Here, the list is in alphabetical order, so that can help you find something fast. For example, the character panel. Here it is. Click it and it will show up in this narrow column. This expands and collapses through a simple click. It's useful when you need the panel from time to time, but you don't want to always go to the window menu and re-enable it. Finally, 
In case you want to bring back a panel that you previously closed, for example learn, you'll find it floating about. No worries, just click and hold its name and move it back to the right column in any position you want. You have complete flexibility. Just remember you can drag any panel in or out of place, close it through the X symbol and use the window menu to go through your list of panels. Ok, what we've just done is set up our workspace. Now there's still a lot to look at, but let's break everything down. The most important part is this central area. This is called the canvas and it's where everything happens. This is where you draw, paint, design and it's where you should focus your attention 90% of the time. That means it's number one on our list. Directly related to it, we have the layers panel. This has an unbreakable connection to the canvas. If I draw a random shape on the canvas through the rectangle tool, hotkey U, we'll also see it in the layers panel. You can't have something on the canvas without it being present in the layers panel. For example, let's add a second item on the canvas. You'll get a second one here too. If you think about driving a car, the canvas is your windscreen through which you can see the road. This is where you constantly look, obviously. The layers panel is your dashboard, where you see your speed, revs, fuel level and so on. You glance at it from time to time. Basically, the layers panel helps you by giving you all sorts of information about the project. It's number two on our list for that reason. On the left side, you have your toolbox or toolbar. This area of Photoshop should be accessed 90% of the time by using your hotkeys. As you continue working, you'll memorize them without any effort. In essence, it's more efficient to hit B to enable your brush tool rather than moving your mouse cursor all the way to the left and then back on the canvas. That's because your work area is here on the canvas and thus this is where your mouse cursor should be at all times. For that reason, the toolbar lands at number 3. Continuing, at the top of Photoshop, you'll find this main menu which contains all sorts of options and features. We'll use it from time to time, but the most important ones have hotkeys and it's much faster to use those instead of going through all these items. Considering all this, it lands at number 4 in my book. Right underneath it, we have this area called the options bar, which changes constantly depending on what tool you have selected. Right now I have the move tool active and I know that because I can see its icon is pressed. If I click on other tools, notice how this area changes. Basically, this is your information zone where you can see and modify the settings for each tool. This is fairly important, but it really depends on the type of work you're doing. Having that in mind, we can place it at number 5. To sum it up, we have 1. The canvas, the most important part. 2. The layers panel. 3. The toolbar. 4. The menu system. And 5. Finally, the options bar. Most of the time, you'll work with the first 3, so don't worry about it. You don't have to memorize anything, because as we work together, everything will flow naturally. Just in case you want a quick recap, I've included a workbook for you to check out. Ok, that wraps it up. While learning Photoshop can feel overwhelming at times, it will be easier now that our screens match. Remember, please have fun with it. Approach each challenge with a positive attitude. If you're ever stuck, which is totally normal and expected, take a look at the workbook for this particular video, which explains things in a bit more detail. When you're ready, I'll see you in the next clip.